Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I am talking about that comfort that we need during troubled times, that comfort that we need during troubled times. And if you're going through something right now, let's say, for instance, that those memories keep popping up back when you were a child and missing loved ones who are now gone, then this is a message for you. A message that will encourage you to create new memories. A message that will cause your children, grandchildren, what have you, to look back fondly on you and what you have done for them. Sometimes a holiday season can bring out the best in people and sometimes it can bring out the worst. Those that end up showing their true colors are the ones who have yet to get those unresolved issues dealt with. They're still grieving the death of loved ones. They're still using drugs and alcohol and chain smoking and gambling, having sex with a number of people, going on ridiculous shopping sprees because they just want to feel good. They're tired of thinking about so-and-so. They're tired of feeling the pain year after year after year when a holiday season comes. That's not the way, the Lord says. That's not the way to deal with the pain. Some folks will just eat and eat and eat all hours of the night and day whenever a thought shows up. You've got to train the mind that when that thought comes up, that I recognize it, I see it, but I can't stay with it. You see, I can't stay with it. That's how I get through it. If a thought comes up, I redirect my thought. I acknowledge it. Yes, I see it. I, I understand we went through whether good, bad or otherwise, but I can't stay in that. I've got to live for the now. I'm responsible for the now. I tell myself, what is it that you need to do right now? Okay, yes, I thought was there, but we got some other things we need to take care of. Okay, we got some pressing matters. It wants to show up again. It wants to bring tears to my eyes. That's all right. I still got other things I need to do. Okay, we're not going to keep going there because if I allow myself to be consumed by grief, if I allow myself to be consumed about back in the day and the good old days and whatever else, what's going to happen is, is that I'm going to fall into a depression and I can't afford to do that. I got too many people relying on me, including you all who are listening. I can't afford to have my mind over there living in some warp of some sort, time warp and not being able to come out of it. That's why I'm careful about who I talk to. If we talking about back in the day for too long, I got to go. If we're over there talking about the pain that somebody caused you or what have you, and now somehow you want to use me as a punching bag verbally or maybe even physically, mm -mm, I got to go. Because I'm not going to be allowing myself to get to a place where I have a mental breakdown, panic, anxiety attacks, can't seem to know where my head is going or coming behind somebody who wants to penalize me or abuse me or hurt me in some kind of way because they're hurt remember hurt people hurt others that's why he goes off and calls everybody names in the house or he kicks down doors or punches walls because he got his issues and he don't know how to deal with them and then somebody comes along and says well smoke this and drink this and calm that you know what on down that ain't gonna do it either because now he got an addiction And that's what was happening to a lot of my family members, particularly male. They weren't mentally strong enough to deal with all of what happened from being caught up in the jail cell because of some mess that they got themselves mixed up in to family members dropping left and right. What's going on? First is my mother, my brother, my sister, whoever. Now, you know, it's this person dying and I can't take it. And they freak out. And then throw mental illness on top of it. And they really are a basket case. And all folks want to do is lock them up. And then you got others who they got all the help in the world. And they still didn't want to listen to the counselors, the psychiatrists, the psychologists. They didn't want to take their medicine. And so, okay, you want to be a hard-headed person and don't want to do and want to get into trouble. Well, there's the jail cell for you. Okay. 
And this happened time and time again. It's not just with some of those relatives who, well, it's my daddy. She talked about, no, honey, long before your daddy was born, this sort of thing was already happening. Okay. It was already happening. His father and his father's father. Remember, I told you all, I wrote socially sweet, private, privately cruel, abusive men. And it was based on all of the stories that I heard. In addition to what I personally witnessed with some of these fathers and uncles and first cousins and everyone else. Okay. It was a lot of dramas and traumas with the family friends that would show up. And they did not know how to deal with these things. And so these family holiday events showed up. And what they did was they gathered around the table with their share of JB and Ezra Brooks. And um, what was it? Some of the mother um, hard liquors back in the day. Jim Dean and Jim Beam, I should say. Um, you know, I'm just trying to think of some of the stuff that I saw. And there was that one that they had in the purple bag. And then there was that other one that was a short half size shaped. Uh, it was a green bottle. And it had a red strip around the top of it. And then, of course, there was vodka, all sorts of vodkas, you know. So this is what they did. And some of you all, y'all talk about, oh, if I was, grew up back in the day, mm -hmm. Let me tell you, it wasn't all fun and games. We made made it innocent, um, some of us kids, by bringing our board games and, you know, some of our electronic games. And we all gathered the kids around to stay out of grown folks' business. But every now and again, you had to pass grown folks talking to get to the bathroom. Or you had to pass grown folks talking on the way out the door. Or you had to pass grown folks talking because they were so loud and animated and some of them was even fighting that you couldn't help but hear what was going on while they told us stay in a child's place. So for some folks, when they think on the past, no, they don't get fond memories and they don't think about the good old days, even though their siblings and someone else want, want them to just stick with the positives. No, they think about the negatives. And so... We acknowledge what took place. We don't deny it. We don't lie. We definitely don't talk to people who don't want to, you know, think about those sorts of things and don't want to acknowledge your pain and don't want to validate you on anything. We definitely don't talk to them. Instead, what we do is we talk to our heavenly father and we talk to counselors who have been there, done it and seen a movie as well as good friends who know where we're coming from. Hallelujah. You see. Turn yourself to me. This is what the Lord says and have mercy on me. Or actually, no, we're going to talk about what David as well as some of the other psalm psalmists have said. Turn yourself to me and have mercy on me for I'm desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart have enlarged. Bring me out of my distress, distresses. Look on my affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins. That's somebody's prayer. And that was taken out of Psalm 25, 16 through 18. Let me repeat that. Turn yourself to me and have mercy on me. And I'm going to throw in, oh God, for I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart have enlarged. Bring me out of my distresses. Look on my affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins. You see, some of those individuals that have gone through so much and continue to go through so much, they haven't asked God to forgive them of their sins. Some of them walked in their father's shoes, walked in their mother's shoes, doing the same old sinful activities that their parents as well as grandparents and great grandparents did. Why? Because it was acceptable. It was pushed upon them. It was what they saw growing up, but it's not acceptable before the eyes of the Lord. Okay. It's not acceptable before the eyes of the Lord, the drinking, the smoking, the gambling, the creeping and the, you know, lying and the stealing and the covering up and all that other stuff that people do. That's not acceptable before the one true God. And I don't understand why some folks feel like they can talk out of two sides of their mouth. If I know doggone well that I told a lie or I'm up to no good or doing something, I cannot very well say, okay, Lord, yeah, we all good. Excuse me, the Lord calls me out. No, we're not all good. Until you confess that sin, until you make wrongs right, you can't have that place, that special anointing, that fresh anointing fall fresh on me. Uh-uh, that doesn't show up 
Okay. We're in darkness as believers, bona fide, born again, sold out, sanctified believers. We're in darkness when we encourage foolishness. When we're a part of foolishness. We're not to be those flying monkeys that torture folks during their troubled times. Well, uh uh-huh, he get what he get because that's not the time to be going there with folk. If anything, you're supposed to pray for him. Yes, we know that he's a pimp, a player, a hustler. We know that he lies and connives and does his share of dirt. But we're going to pray for him that through all of what he's going through, that he's going to come to know the one true God before our eyes close. It may not happen, though, before our, our eyes close. But we're going to keep the faith anyway. Lord Jesus, you might be that one that happened to come across this message and you're saying, I need some peace. I'm so tired of all this trouble, trouble from the baby mama, trouble from my own mama, trouble from (laughs) trouble from, you know, worker workers and trouble from, you know, financial issues. And I can't seem to do for my kids. Well, I'm telling you in Jesus mighty name that when you done tried everybody else and everything else, why don't you try the one true God have some faith must receive faith is all he's asking for must receive faith. You know how tiny a mustard seed is. If you don't know, you can look it up on the internet. That's all he's asking for. That little bit of faith, that little bit of faith. A brother told me not that long ago. He said a Brown brother. And I say that because We know that right now, a lot of folk, our brown brothers and sisters have been going through a lot ever since this president showed up in office. Okay. And he didn't have much faith. Matter of fact, I don't even think he had even a mustard seed faith when I first talked to him. But because of what God is doing in his life right now, he looked at me, he said, he pointed up. He said, that was nothing but God. Because so many good things are happening to him right now since our last conversation. I'm telling you, it ain't always about laying hands on folks and then running them over to the church. Sometimes you can just reach them right where they are. And for some of you all, you can get that comfort through troubled times if you would just simply give a bit of positivity of yourself to someone who needs it. Even if it is just a simple gesture Where you give somebody some money or you give somebody your time or you offer some service. Because, see, I can get my mind off of a whole lot of stuff when I just simply go over there and say, is there something that I need or is there something that you need that I can help you with? And then they turn around and they say, no, but I can help you with something. Whoa, Lord Jesus. And, you know, it's nothing but God. You can get your mind off of some things by just simply listening to the music that just uplifts you, motivates you. And it doesn't always need to be a gospel music. There's been times where I was uplifted with just a positive worldly song. And I mean positive, not something disrespectful and nasty and you can't play around children. But just a positive song, one that that writer did have a faith. Okay. Absolutely had a faith. Gone now but had a faith back then when they wrote that song, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Some folks say I need to work a little while longer, a little bit longer, or I need to get another job. And that's what gives them peace. Well, hallelujah and praise the Lord. If that's what they're doing, they're not out here in the street. They're not out here using drugs. If that's what they want to do for now, so be it. But when you got a family, though, I had to learn that one. When you got a family, you got to balance some things out. Otherwise, now you got more issues because they're saying that's all you do is work. You ain't got no time to talk to nobody. You don't have no time to come around and show some love. Share some of that money that you've been making all this time. Come on now. And you're saying, okay, well, yeah, let me humble myself a bit, right? Let me work out my schedule. Okay. (laughs) Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Do you have some issues? Do you have some care? Do you have some unmet needs? Well, I'm suggesting some folks cast their care upon him for he cares for you. 
Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. You're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, established strength and settle you to him, be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Yes. During that suffering. Yes. It is. Tr it's just trying. It just brings out the worst in us. But then. And only then do we turn our hearts and our minds toward the one true God. The Lord has a way of blessing us through our storms, don't he? Woo, Jesus. Remember the last time you went through, God got you out. He going to get you out again. Remember the last time you were troubled in mind, body, and spirit. That same God that I keep talking about on these audios is going to bring you out again. Have a little faith. Hmm. Have a little faith. Oh, have a little faith. Psalm 33, 17 through 22. A horse is a vain hope for safety. <laughs> they knew that back then. Neither shall it deliver any by its great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him. Some folks say, I don't fear God. That's because you ain't been through enough to fear God. But once you go through enough, oh yeah, you fear God. Especially when there's those consequences of sin that you know no man and no woman was responsible for. But there was a bit of paranormal activity. There was something strange. Wait a minute. Mmm, it scared me. It woke me up in the middle of the night. Mmm. All right now. That's where some of our fears showed up and showed out. We said, this is nothing but the Lord. There is something beyond the skies. Uh-huh. So I see, said the blind man, the blind woman. On those who hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. That's where our hope is. In the one true God, on those who hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death. How many times have people escaped death? And how many times did you give honor and praise to the one true God? This might be the first time for some of you all. Oh, that's right. On those who hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield for our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us just as we hope in you. Hallelujah. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield for our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let your mercy, let your mercy, let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us just as we hope in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for reminding us of these scriptures. God is a righteous God, a holy God. He's a just God. He is a forgiving God. But we cannot lose sight that he is still that Old Testament God, Yahweh. And he's not playing with men and women who think that they can play him and play his people. Okay? So keep that in mind. Sometimes troubled times come upon some folk because they play in they playing with God's people. They saying things about God's people. They're being quite disrespectful, whether to their face or behind their back. They're assuming things that are incorrect about God's people. And meanwhile, God's people is out here helping some folk. Mind what you say. Mind what you say. Once again, God is a good God. He's not going to do all of what some folks assume he's going to do. His mercy sometimes shows up on some folks who confess sin and who repent. And some folks, they got to go through the trenches. But then they come out ahead, though, because they finally humbled themselves before the Lord. Blessings to you this holiday season and beyond. Please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. You've been listening to YouTube in Enterprise 7.